ಜೀವನ್ಮುಕ್ತಸ್ತು ತದ್ವಿಧ್ವಾನ್ ಪೂರ್ವೋಪಾಧಿ ಗುಣಾಂಸ್ತ್ಯಜೇತ್ ಸಚ್ಚಿದಂದರೂಪತ್ವೇದ್ಭ್ರಮರಕೀತವ ಜೀವನ್ಮುಕ್ತಸ್ತು ತದ್ವಿಧ್ವಾನ್ ಪೂರ್ವೋಪಾಧಿ ಗುಣಾಂಸ್ತ್ಯಜೇತ್ the liberated soul endowed with self knowledge gives up the traits of his previous equipment and becomes the self with the nature of existence knowledge bliss sachidananda just as bhavet bhramara kitavat bhramara kitavat is just like a a worm a worm transforms into a wasp how a worm transforms itself into a wasp in the process it leaves the traits of the worm and becomes the wasp exactly the same way here he says the liberated soul liberated soul is jeevan mukti <clears throat> that's a sanskrit word jeevan mukta what does it suggest that a person can attain moksha as he is alive an opposed school of thought to jeevan mukta is vid videha mukti videha mukti means a person should attain should leave this embodiment that salvation is only possible at the point of physical death that argument cannot be accepted because a person if he attains moksha only upon physical death then we don't have men of realization at all isn't it then who is sharing all this you mean to say these people are not attained moksha that's a too much to accept so the fact that jeevan mukti is possible which means any one of us can attain realization during the course of our life span and then live the rest of the life of a person who has attained realization <clears throat> now the example helps to convey the message the the worm what is the the larva isn't it rajima hmm? so the can you explain what the transformation here is how does it happen guruji the egg becomes the pupa then the larva and then it gets cocooned in its own um, and then the growth happens and then the uh, then it transforms into a, a wasp or a butterfly or a moth these are the various stages it's a beautiful transformation isn't it absolutely but just like that larva or that worm which is just stuck in that cocoon we are also cocooned in a world of ourselves thinking ourselves to be the limited equipments of the body mind and intellect but where is that what is the difference between that worm which is in that cocoon we serve with that wasp which has that the sky the open sky to fly out and what a transformation so just like that worm gets rid of the as he uses the word traits of the previous equipment so what are the traits of the worm limited immobile in fact the the wasp maybe the mother comes and leaves a uh, something for it to eat as it grows up and then we are we all caught up in that little world of ourselves so to break the shackles and explore the unknown truth that quality to go beyond the comforts of your cocoon and to plunge into the unknown truth that is known as purushatvam 
the capacity to plunge into the unknown and explore the unexplored truth, that quality is attributed to manliness. It's like if you take that, that word is known as purushatvam, you know, that, that capacity to explore the unknown. If you take an example, it is the men who would go deep into the, into the seas to catch the fish. They go to the uncharted waters to, to catch the fish. And say, perhaps the lady in the house, she's, she cleans up the, the catch and prepares the food and serves the family. It would never vice versa. There are exceptions to it. It's not that the husband is cooking and cleaning and the lady has gone into the ocean to catch the fish. It is never the case. So you may have that purushatvam quality in women as well, but it is usually a manly quality, a manhood. You know? So that quality, all of us should have, everybody. What are we trying to explore? We are trying to explore the unknown truth, the self. So when you have that, then you'll experience this transformation that how restricted. So do you feel a sense of restriction? So what is the cocooned feeling? What it is to have the cocooned feeling, Padminima? I'm just going with the example. As the worm is cocooned in its own cocoon, yeah, cocoon is a state of sleep, sleep or uh, no action. How do you draw a parallel of that cocooned feeling in the spiritual parlance? Uh, before you realize the truth, there is a stage when you don't have to do any action and that will uh, happen automatically. The realization will come once you have gone through the previous procedures or processes and then that uh, period of uh, waiting to get liberated. See, liberation is like the transformation of a, a worm into a wasp the wasp will feel suffocated in the cocoon, not the worm. The worm needs the cocoon to mature into a wasp. Yeah. Now my, my question is, when do you feel suffocated in the cocoon? You just want to come out of it. You're waiting. Anna, they don't, you're, you're, you're still talking the literality of the example. I want the philosophical parlance. Uh, you feel uh, something like... Uh, you'll be very anxious to come out of it and that feeling of uh, breaking it open and... Are you, I know, I know you are all, you are stuck in your house for the past so long, there's lockdown, you're cocooned in your own house. You want to break the shackles and just go out and experience the world. I know that, I know what you're talking about, but I'm not talking of that, Ma. I'm talking of spiritual cocoon. It's, 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 is it a stage of Samadhi or something? No, 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 no. I'm not talking of the, the enlightened state. I'm talking of the, Ma, can you, relate to the cocoon being a suffocation. Cocoon is an environment. After a point, you'll get suffocated in that. Yet the same environment helped you grow, like help the worm transform into a wasp. The question is, what is the philosophical parlance? Because the verse is using an example. Fair enough, I don't want to... Uh, push you further, but I know you're thinking along. I'm just trying to use uh, the, the philosophy here. It's not, uh, a few of them have said, uh, UK, cocooned by the worldly activities. Uh, Namaste Guruji. Vashkarama. Hmm. Uh, 
you feel uh, particularly when you are in this uh, path of uh, getting this knowledge or something like that when you are uh, just treading this path you feel all the more suffocated because of this worldly activities which you are compelled to carry on so what do you do worldly activities na tomorrow onwards kitchen close ha adu mudiyadu paavo i feel don't please don't the, don't close the kitchen i say these are no. worldly activities no. i am renouncing the lower and picking up the higher i have become the wa- the, the wasp i'm not no more the worm don't say all this ha no no then uh, again your karma yoga will hold you back guruji <laughs> you cannot uh, do Ange that ange or litigation irukke yeah. you can't run away from them correct Yeah. but so so then then what is it then so you have to get liberated at the same time uh, you have to carry on your bhakti yoga karma yoga and this thing and uh, integrate it and try to uh, no, no i know we will integrate that yoga ad ange pakkad vechungad the previous verse inge the question now so here this is, is the this is the uh, what i meant uh, guru ji this uh, this is what your kupundin uh, and uh, you feel a little suffocated so you want to correct you feel suffocated yeah the question is when does one get suffocated that's the question okay. the question you... is still there okay when you have uh, 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 arrived at the stage of the wisdom and you know that uh, the worldly uh... wisdom is like becoming the wasp and exploring yeah, the okay. sky already okay okay but there is that phase where we there is that experience of suffocation you thinking thinking along i'm just trying to just yeah, stretch that, that word yes yes, yes. Yeah. right all right no problem uk okay? you're very good so far vijay ji can we say when we have outgrown it guru ji when we are ready and we are well, for the next stage and outgrown the previous stage you feel suffocated yes then what that do you do in a growth. philosophical Out, sense our our out, uh, out, out, outgrown means what here in in a in a philosophical sense mentally you are more evolved by then yes so it this becomes too small you know you feel uh, claustrophobic or suffocated yes the claustrophobic feeling or that suffocative feeling you know uh, using these words the great ramakrishna paramahamsa he says you know if i were to push a person's head under a sheet of water and hold him there for a few seconds what is that feeling he would have you depriving him that few moments of breath what is that feeling that there is the only word that is suffocation the same suffocative feeling siddhartha felt he wanted to explore the truth that is so much knowledge and wisdom is coming your way does this suff- does 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 there is there a feeling of suffocation in fact if there is no suffocative feeling you're not growing if you are very comfortable doing what you are doing there is no growth the moment you feel suffocated that means you have outgrown it outgrown it in thought not in act mark my words please it is not that you got to say oh i've outgrown in act and i will not do and i'll move on it is not that outgrown in thought you feel suffocated when you think in a certain selfish manner you think of yourself and your family it should suffocate you it should it should insult you it should it should cause a great uh, feeling of uneasiness when how much will i how much more will i make my myself how long will i keep thinking for myself what am i going to do with all this let me think of something beyond there has to be but yet the same thought when you were earlier perhaps you said i need to give my i need to make myself something i need to establish myself i need to secure myself and the family you're quite comfortable with those thoughts but after a point you feel sick of running behind the same thing 
wealth perhaps had served you at a point but thereafter it is not the end of everything wealth is only a means to an end you will start suffocating when you start getting stuck in it as an end in itself this is the concept i want to get out of you all things suffocate you because it has served its purpose and you still attached to it and holding on to it as if it is everything and i the cocoon help the worm to become the wasp but if the wasp thinks that cocoon is the home and it's everything the world it has known it has seen it has lived and experienced it will start suffocating the wasp it's too small a place for the worm to be in the cocoon is not the end of everything it's just a means for you to take you to the brighter worlds so everything in your life whether be it family money status recognition social life everything that you are holding on to in life is just a cocoon at some stage or the other if you're still holding on to those cocoons thinking is everything in life you will feel uh, suffocated you suffocate because you're outgrown it and you're still holding on to it you you're not meant to be in thought mark my words it's not suffocation is only a mental feeling it is not an act you got to perform your duties and responsibilities your karyam karma so performing your duties there you can outgrow your thoughts i just can't think for myself and my family man atma karanat if you think for yourself you're committing a sin says the shastras how can you continue to do that and yet you speak words of wisdom all this atma bodha all this thought wisdom is there and yet you think of your own limited well being you are making a cocoon of yourself you're stuck in it so the very sh- shell which helped you grow restricts you and destroys you it's a very subtle concept it's a it's a very acute feeling and i can't transfer my feeling to you you can't transfer your feeling to me it's impossible it's a it's a very personal thing uh, why are you you know in something everything in life has a certain charm beyond of Uh, to a certain point beyond a point it loses its charm isn't it but you're still holding on to it as if it's everything doesn't a parent tell a child man you have outgrown that toy for god say get it off it you would not tell a child when the child is at that level would you you get the the concept yeah vijay ji guruji does it imply in some way that you have to go through life and uh, go through the process and keep evolving go through the experiences before you start feeling suffocated not really it the reverse is not true but no no what... in fact sir let's say you have acquired 60% wisdom in this janma and when you move on would you start from zero or from 61 it depends on what we carry over i suppose i am i am giving you 60% sir i have been very charitable actually yeah we will start from there you will start from 61, 61 isn't it so you have already outgrown all those mental challenges and experiences from 0 to 60 because you have done nirantara abhyasa in this janma it has taken you to that fairly high elevated state of 60% evolution you have discovered the self you realize the self to that extent so next janma you will have you will have to move on from there in fact you will be given an environment where you will start from there not from 0 to 60 so you are free from all those experiences which others are battling so you are you are not shackled by all this because your thoughts are very very high you already way beyond all that you are not confined by family you are not confined by all those things you are not attached to them the context i was asking guru ji is because you know it does it uh, i mean you have explained it anyway that uh, at a young age we haven't had a, you know gone through anything so are we supposed to be better prepared to break out at, as we grow older or not okay you have explained it it's uh, so this the physical experiences and the spiritual age are not same sir 
spiritual age is not the physical age the spiritual age has a different age altogether so you can have a spiritual age and yet may not have the physical age and yet you are much wiser because you have done the sadhana in the it's only continuity yeah but the so, guruji can it be rule or an exception sorry is it a rule or an exception i mean do all the people get that maturity and you know the the calling and the uh, you know the thirst for seeking well everybody has to evolve to that state but the percentage of people is minuscule compared to the entire humanity True. so but some day they will have to grow out of it but this is this is the destination it's a matter of time all will reach if not now maybe 10 janmas 50 janmas from now they will reach this is the goal but this is what the the destination is and what will ensure we are marching is that feeling of suffocation so just to make it clear the suffocative feeling comes when you have when you start taking something as an end in itself and hold on to it it starts insulting you every walk of the way when something becomes an end in itself it starts suffocating the cocoon was not an end in itself for the worm it was only a means for it to grow out of it and become a wasp to go beyond the cocoon the moment you treat your family as an end in itself you will start feeling insulting and that is measured with how lofty your thought is if your thought is lofty you feel suffocated when i'm only thinking of myself what i'm saying it's a, it's parallel to the grandeur of thought you can have if you have a loftier thought you will use everything as a means to get to that end something doesn't sit well looks like hariji are you okay all right so just like the worm become the wasp he says the enlightened a jeevan mukta gives up the traits of the previous equipment so what is the traits of the previous equipment and what is the nature of the equipment's existence knowledge bliss so when he uses the phrase existence knowledge bliss which is sat chit ananda this is a very famous often used terminology sat what is it sat what is sat sat is existence what is it that is existing existing is near inert matter inert objects they are existing isn't it? things exist if i leave my pencil on the table today subject to nobody else comes into my room it will exist there for next 10 days even 10 years maybe <laughs> it will lie there because it is it has no life it is inert matter so existing the inert matter exists chit is knowledge chit and ananda actually are talking about living beings so chit is when you when the living beings have knowledge of you have knowledge of what you have knowledge of the waking state which is the wakeful experience you have the knowledge of the dream state the dreamful ex- dreaming experience so when you are the waker and the dreamer you have knowledge of the waking state knowledge of the dream state that is chitta and bliss is the 
ananda you experience when the human being or living be- human being or living being in general goes into deep sleep when you experience the temporary bliss so sat chit ananda are the traits of objects and beings and objects and beings jai shri ma are you following jai shri prabhu ma are you able to follow ma you looked a little could you please unmute yourself ma i'm trying to understand no i could see that uh, little, little difficulty difficult to understand yeah i saw yes. the expression as if i wanted to where, where is the difficulty no i am trying to understand that the vast could you just is... could could you just lean back a little as you were sitting yes. ah now okay yes yeah perfect i was trying to understand how the vast from the stage of this coming out like how we can do that in our life how we are able to do that that's what i was thinking little difficult to understand sir <laughs> no 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 nothing is difficult i just you just have to start putting in the the concepts with the example so the worm yes. the worm is who is the worm the worm we are, we are the worm and an unevolved yes. spiritual practitioner is a worm we need the cocoon is the world that you're living in whatever you're holding on to your family name money status yes, all yes. that you're holding that is the cocoon yes and the wasp is when you outgrow the thought of just confined to the limitations of your family yes. running behind your personal passions and desires attachments and, and desires attachments. and satisfying your attachments and desires correct so yes. you in fact you follow what you say not following you actually follow huh? so trying to put it in the mind no no correct so the attachments and desires is the cocoon yeah. and when you realize the futility in that yes. in fact the famous words of the same guru we are talking about the same guru adi shankara acharya talks in bhajagovindam nahi nahi rakshate dukrin karne the bhajagovindam he says is it therefore he says bhajagovindam seek govinda seek the truth nahi nahi rakshate all this material mundane activities is of no use man nahi nahi rakshate so when you understand in a true spirit that pursuit of it ends the action may be the same you have to come out of that you have to come out of okay. come out the of that mentally correct, correct. so when the realization happens you are ready you have become the wasp yeah. and i think you already become the wasp <laughs> <laughs> so yeah yeah it, we are all becoming wasps in stages that's all we'll say you know philosophically i'm saying you know philosophically all right so uh, sat chit ananda sat is existence what is existing is inert matter chit is the experience of dream and waking where your knowledge of and ananda is the deep sleep experience where you have knowledge of the bliss so this is the trait of the matter matter constitutes of in a broad sense matter of what what is matter so you just have to put a simple simple equation life has got two principles under life there is matter and spirit under life life is a heading under life comes spirit and matter spirit is the consciousness so spirit is the wasp the transformed state the matter constitutes of gross matter and subtle matter gross matter is what inner objects and in fact physical body also is inner object isn't it when the body is dead what happens it becomes a piece of 
matter, isn't it? It merges with matter. So under matter, we said gross matter, subtle matter. Gross matter consists of inert objects and physical body. Subtle matter constitutes of desires and vasanas. So in the chart, I repeat, life has spirit and matter. Spirit is the consciousness. Under matter, we said there's gross matter, subtle matter. Gross matter constitutes of inert matter and the physical body. Subtle matter constitutes of desires and vasanas. Now the text is saying, he has given up the traits of the previous equipment, which is Sat Chit Ananda. Sat Chit Ananda is he has given up the traits of matter and he's become the spirit. That's all he's saying. He has given up the traits of inert objects and living beings, which is what is the trait of inert objects and living beings? They are perishable. He has become the immortal self, the Jeevan Muktaha, the liberated one, has become the immortal self become the Atman. So it's a very unique, very, very beautifully uh, incorporates that concept in his own unique way. But I think the example of the worm and the wasp should not be forgotten. Remember, don't be stuck in your cocoon. Uh, get out of it. Elevate your thoughts to something beyond the cocoon. Don't stagnate. If the worm continues to stay in the cocoon, the very cocoon will destroy it, isn't it? It will die in the very cocoon. So if you keep expanding uh, so much examples, you can start comparing. So don't limit yourself to your cocoon and get stagnate spiritually. Okay, very inspiring, very, very inspiring. Just for what it's worth, let's chant this mantra once again so that it stays with us and we pay our salutations to the great guru for giving out this original thought. Mm -hmm. Gayatri Ma, are you there? Could you please share the verse? Thank you. All of you chant together with me, you know. Jeevan Muktastu Tad Vidvan Purvo Padhi Gunam Stiaje Satchidananda Rupatva Bhavet Brahmarati Tava Om Poor Namada, poor Namidam, poor Nath, poor Namudachate, poor Nasya, poor Namadaya, poor Nameva Vashishate, Om Shanti, Shanti. Shanti Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namah Hari Om